everybody. It is Connie with the Artisan Company. Welcome one more time to the channel. Today, we are going to do something completely off the radar. Oh my, we're going to paint some feathers. Yes, we're going to paint some feathers. So feathers have become really, really popular in jewelry, especially with hair. And I usually have something in my hair with a feather on it, but I don't today. But uh, earrings and um, I've done chokers with feathers. I've done hair things with feathers. And it's just sometimes feathers just in a big vase are beautiful. So um, we're going to do some extremely basic uh, painting techniques like dots and dashes and things like that. You will not be a Rembrandt on your first trip out. So don't get discouraged. Okay? <laughs> Um, but the thing is, is to um, expand your mind and doing something different that you've not put your hand to. If you don't love it, then hey, you don't have to do it. But if it triggers something in you and you go, I really like this and I really want to go forward with this, then I've done my job and I've sparked something new in you. And so that's that's the whole thing is doing something fun and different and creative. So, hey, let's go paint some feathers. <laughs> OK, we are going to get started here. I'm going to tell you what you need. You will need paper towels, a few. Okay, paper towels or something that you can dry your brushes off and things like that or spills that you may have. So paper towels, you'll need a little cup of water. You can see I've already been playing with mine. So a little cup of water to wash your brushes and little things off with. You will need something to put some paint in and a few colors of paint. Uh, these are acrylic and uh, I always do uh, red, white, and black always for me uh, because they tend to uh, go with what I am doing as far as the design. Uh, I added a blue, and I, the reason why I added this blue is so you could see it. Uh, I like a darker blue or a lighter blue, but I just wanted you to see it, be able to see it. You can use whatever colors that you want. It doesn't matter. But keep in mind the feather color that you're using, because obviously if you're using a black feather, you're not going to see black paint very well on it. So you're going to you have to use lighter paints in order to see them, lighter colored paints. So keep in mind what feathers you're using color wise and determine what colors that you want to use. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. Be creative with it. This little thing is a six Pronger, you can get them at any craft store, um, Walmart, Wally World. We call it Wally World here, <laughs> Walmart. You can get these anywhere, and they're ultra cheap, and you can get several in a package. So you'll need some paint. Uh, you will need some things like this. This is the oddball things right here. I have got uh, three different pins here and I know this is probably unorthodox but this was how I was taught so I'm teaching you how I was taught okay the native people that I traveled with uh showed me this so I didn't have to carry a whole lot of stuff around uh but I've got uh three uh pins here like that you sew with that have different size heads on them because those different size heads make different size dots uh, on your feather. So you may need a big fat one or you may need just a little hairpin dot. So I've got this one, this one, and this one. You can also use the flathead pins as well. This is just a needle big enough that I can hold on to. Let me pick him back it. That I can hold on to. But it has a little bit of a flat edge on it. I don't know if you can see it. I'm trying to turn it where you can see it. But it has a little bit of a flat edge on it. And uh, it makes a specific design. So we're going to use that. And it's long so I can hold on to it because I don't like things so small that I have a hard time holding them. So you'll need some things like this right here. And you can choose the sizes you want. The other thing that I have here are some brushes. 
And this is also a choice of yours as well. You can choose whatever uh, size, but it's better with a feather if you can use something that's really, really uh, thin and small because you may want to go up the shaft of the feather on the outside edge of a feather or do a little star pattern or something like that. So I've got uh, four different things here. Two of them look similar. Um, I'll tell you what I have. This one right here is made by Grumbacher. This, this brush is. And the number on it is, it's a number one. It's a 626B. I'll try to see if you can see that. I can't hardly see the camera from this direction, but it's Grumbacher number one, 626B. I don't know if you can see that or not. Eventually, I am going to have uh, links where you can find these things. Uh, but that's that one. And the tip of it is kind of kind of blunt, but not really blunt. I, I don't know how to explain it. If, and then the screen, yeah, I am. Uh, it's kind of rounded, but blunt too. I don't know how to describe it, but anyway, that's that one. And then I have this one, which is uh, made by Plaid. Uh, and, you know, Plaid also has the uh, acrylic paints as well, but it's a number two flat. The number on it is 4427A. A number two flat 44278 that's that one okay and you can see the little head on it is literally chopped off it's flat flat as a glitter okay this one is also made by plaid it is a zero round number 44278 a zero round 44278, also made by Plaid. Okay. And then this one is almost identical to it. It is a, uh, uh, a 10 round 44278, also made by Plaid. And you can see that it's a 10, 10 over zero there. Round 44278 made by Plaid. Okay, if you can see those. All right. And you can see these two are very, very similar in uh, size. One is longer than the other one. The brushes, the little bristles are longer on, on one than it is on the other. And actually, this one is a little thinner than this one. So that's what I've got. You don't have to have any of those if you don't want them, but that's what I've got, okay? The feathers, now what I've picked out here, you can go uh, to any commercial place, uh, maybe like a Hobby Lobby or a Michaels, or uh, you can get online and search for feathers and companies that carry feathers commercially. And that's, that's great because you don't have to worry about uh, whether they are legal or not and whether or not they have been cleaned properly, that kind of thing. It is illegal in the United States to have any bird of prey. So, um, you know, unless you're native, it's the laws. So any bird of prey, so that would be eagle of any kind, bald eagle, golden eagle, a hawk of any kind, owl, any type of raptor um, bird. And that would be like an osprey as well if you live on the waterways and you have osprey. Anything that is a raptor type bird, you cannot have those feathers legally. So I just want you to know up front so you don't get in trouble, <laughs> but you can do what you want to. Um, there are other birds, too, that are uh, maybe on the endangered list, so you need to check those sources out before you start putting feathers on things that maybe you shouldn't, okay? Um, so it's better if you just get something commercial. Uh, that way you'll know that it's, it's okay. Now, 
I will tell you this, you can get a uh, faux uh, like eagle and faux hawk and faux owl feathers that look, you almost can't tell the difference between them and the real thing. So you can get those. Turkey and things like that are okay. Uh, these feathers I actually picked up out of my yard. And um, these are uh, crow feathers right here and this is a crow feather right here and I've already painted a little bit on it just to play get my my stuff back up in the swing uh, but these are crow uh, this is blackbird right here these are dove feathers that were dropped at my bird feeder okay now if you pick up feathers out of your yard <laughs> you got to clean them even if you have chickens and the beautiful ornate chickens that drop their feathers, those are stunning. And I've used a lot of those as well on hats and things like that. Um, but they will need to be cleaned. So you need to clean them with some Dawn dishwashing liquid. And uh, you can put a little liquid in a, a bowl big enough to hold your feathers. Uh, put some water in there with it. Put them in there, swish them like that in your bowl. Um, take them out, run them under some water, warm water, with the shaft down, which is like that. You don't want to run the water this way because it's going to separate your feather. You want the shaft going down or up, whichever way you want to look at it. But anyway, you want the water running down like this off the feather once it is cleared of the soap gently 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 take your finger and pull the feather down just like this to get the excess water out very very gently then take a, a paper towel or a tissue of some kind and just blot it like that to get the rest out just blot it flat like that okay and then you can either set it aside and let it dry on its own, or you can get a blow dryer on a gentle uh, cycle and, and blow it gently. Try not to blow it back, words like this, because you don't want this part of the feather to separate. You want it to try to stay as intact as possible. Okay, So blow with the grain of the feather, not against it. Okay, All right. So what I've done here is I've got this uh, this crow feather and I started on this to help somebody with something else they were working on and I thought, oh, I need to show her how to do this. Uh, so I took my acrylic paints. I've got red, white, and blue on here and I did uh, use different size pins. So the white dot here on the top is this big head pin. This one with the biggest head made that dot the next one down the red one was made by this size here and then these blue little blue marks if you can see them coming up the shaft of the feather right there were made by this itty bitty little pin head right here if you can see that hopefully you can okay these little marks these little dots right here too where's my little thing you can see these little tiny dots right here were made with that itty bitty bitty pinhead. These right here were made with the needle. Is that not the coolest ever? You can also do this kind of thing right here with the end of your pen too, on this end of the pen. And I'll show you how to do that as well. Okay, so I did not wash these feathers. So I'm just painting on them just for the fun of it today. But um, let's get started. Okay, so I've got my feathers on a paper towel or whatever you want to put them on so that whatever you're painting on, unless you just don't care, doesn't get um, paint everywhere. Oh, and a trusty apron. You need an apron, people. You need an apron. <laughs> because paint has a mind of its own and it will find its way to your clothes. So <laughs> get an apron. <laughs> All right. 
so I'm going to show you these. Let me fold this right here in half. Maybe it'll help for you to see. Okay. And you can see these little patterns here that I've made. Okay. Uh, I'm looking to make sure I can, you're, I mean, I'm in the camera. Okay, this dot right here was made with the medium size pinhead. This was made with the smallest pinhead. These are medium pinheads. This right here, these patterns were the, made with the needle, or you can make them with the other end of the pin. Kind of looks like a little flower thing. These right here were made with that flathead brush. This one right here that has the, the completely flat head on it, that's what made these little marks right there. Okay. This one right here was made with the skinniest brush I have. This one was made with the next skinniest brush. And this one was made with the Grumbacher brush that has the wider, wider uh, head on it there. I told you I couldn't decide if it was flat or round <laughs> earlier. Made that one. So you can see the difference in how it looks. Now, you can use your fingertip as well. Um, it's going to make a larger dot, but I will show you. And you, and you don't, don't, don't get too much paint on it. You want to take some of it off, kind of like that. Um, and then you'll just mash it. And it makes a very organic looking dot, almost like you would paint on your face. But it doesn't take a lot of paint, so make sure you don't have a big wad of paint on your finger. Brush some of it off so that it'll leave a nice little fingerprint look there. Okay, let me wipe my finger off here. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to pick up this uh, blackbird right here, this feather right here. I'm going to set these over to the side for the moment. Okay, let me get my paint here. I got all my doodads. All right, so this feather is black. So remember we were talking about earlier making sure that you don't put too dark a paint on too dark of a feather because you won't see it. So I'm going to put my feather down here, and you can hold it with your finger because it will move if you're not careful. I'm going to use this little flathead brush that we were talking about earlier. And I'm going to do a white. So I just barely got paint on the end of that. I didn't put just a ton of paint. It's just barely on the end. And if you want to practice, okay, look, there you go. See if, I, if you can see it. It's just barely on the end. And if you want to do this on your paper towel, just to see the pattern it's going to make to make sure you got the right amount of paint on there that's good I mean don't get in a hurry because I'll tell you one thing getting in a hurry doing feathers is not not gonna fare well for you okay? <laughs> if you're not patient this may not be your cup of tea <laughs> so, all right I'm going to start on the shaft of this and I'm just which is that little thing that runs down the center, and I'm just going to barely tap on it. Just barely. I mean, what Bob Ross used to say, three hairs and some air. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Three hairs and some air. And I'm going down. I'm going to put one more. I usually do things in ones, threes, fours, fives, and sevens. That's my thing. All right, I'm going to bring that up close so you can kind of see what I did. You can see it kind of makes an oblong um, design on there, kind of an oblong look. All right, so I've got that one. I'm going to wash this brush out. 
wipe it off. Acrylic paints dry pretty fast, guys, so make sure you um, don't leave your brushes out too long. Okay, since this feather is not huge, I'm going to start with the medium size pinhead that I have. And I am going to put some red dots coming down the rest of this shaft. Just barely, you just barely, barely put the paint on there. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. And you just tap it very lightly. Very, very lightly. And I'm going to do three right there. I did three very, very lightly. Can you see them? Hope so. Very, very lightly. I mean, it is a gentle touch, guys. Gentle touch. Gentle touch. All right, so I'm going to wipe that one off. And then I'm going to go down here. I'm going to use the bigger head pin that I've got. And I'm going to finish this off with one dot right there on the tip. And I think I will go back to the white. I started to do blue, but I changed my mind. And if you think you've got too much paint on the end, just wipe it off. Don't, don't continue forward. Just wipe it off and start over. It's okay. It's just a little dab of paint. So I've got too much on that one. So I'm going to wipe it off and start over. And that looks a little better right there. A little better. Still a little much, so I'm going to dab just a smidgen of it off right there on the side of my thing, or you can do it on the side of the paper with a paper towel. Going down here, I'm going to make a larger dot on this bottom, right down here. So I'm pressing it. I pressed it. Okay. And then I'm going to wipe this off so it doesn't dry on there. That one needs, I need to clean up my edge on that one, but so there you go. I've got three dashes, uh, four dashes of white, got three dots of red, and a large dot of white on this particular feather. And you just let that dry. Acrylics dry pretty, pretty quickly, but if you're going to make it into jewelry, uh, I would let it dry overnight so it really, really sets because uh, you don't want to knock any of the paint off. Okay, now I'm going to flip over to the back and I am going to put another dot right there. You can see where the paint's barely bleeding through right there. I'll put another dot right there in case that feather flips over in the hair or whatever earring it's on. If it flips over, it'll be just as pretty on the back side as it is on the front. That is also something that I love to do making earrings is make the back as pretty as the front especially with uh, people with shorter hair and, you know, earrings will look really pretty that way. All right. Wipe it off. I should have let this dry before I did it, but I didn't. I'm trying to respect your time. But technically, this side should dry first before you do the back side. But anyway, there it is. And if you flip it, it looks got a little dot on the back right there. And you can actually decorate all the way up the back if you want. Okay. All right, I'm going to set him over to the side and we're going to do something different. Put him right there because he's still a little wet. Yes, make sure you let one side dry before you uh, start on the other side. Okay, let's get this crow feather right here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down the edge right here of this, and it is an ultra, ultra light touch. And I mean, oh my goodness, it's, it's 
it takes practice okay it takes a lot of practice and i may not do it 100 percent well today <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway i am going to take the brush that's the thinner this thin 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 and this one is um it's the 10.0 round 44278 10.0 round 44278 plaid brush. All right. So I am going to do, let's see here. I'm going to do the blue this time. Now, if your paint starts getting, uh, because you're not working fast enough or you can't work very fast, your paint may get a little crusty over the top and you're going to have to stir that up or, or uh, get that off so it doesn't mess with your uh, thickness of your paint. All right, so I've got this little bright thing right here, and I'm just going to literally run it down the side very, very lightly. And then I'm going to twirl it in the paint just a little bit, not much. You can see it's very, very, very little paint. And I'm just going to barely, in little tiny strokes, brush it down the side. A little bit more here. And, and you can also go back over it, you know, to darken it up some, and that's kind of what I'm doing. But guys, I'm telling you, it is ultra, 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 ultra light touch. You can't do it heavy. It ain't going to fly real good if you do it heavy. So um, just take your time. Be patient with it. Acrylic dries fast, so you don't have to wait forever for it to dry. Uh, I don't recommend doing oil because it will spread within the uh, the parts of the feather, and it'll look oily. So you don't want to do that one. So acrylics better for me. I am not a ultra professional feather painter. There are people who are, and so. You know, their tutorials are probably, would probably rock your world if you found somebody really good at it. And they are beautiful when, when they're done. Oh my gosh. All right, my little crow didn't, didn't know he was going to have blue on the edge of his feather <laughs> at one time. And I used to do this all the time. <laughs> when I had a house in the country and I needed some feathers for a project. Uh, you know how blackbirds, they collect uh, in trees? <laughs> they kind of gather together and have conversations in trees. Okay, so what I do is I let them all, I used to let them all gather. I mean, where there'd be hundreds of them out there. <laughs> and I'd sneak outside very quietly as close as I could get to them, and I would clap my hands really loud and go, hey! <laughs> and the feathers would drop. <laughs> and I would just go out and collect them up out of the yard. They would they would leave me all kinds of feathers uh, just from sheer <laughs> trying to get out of the way. <laughs> but anyway, it was just really fun. If you got a bird feeder, check around your bird feeders, you know, and that kind of thing. All right. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's just a barely an edge of blue on the black. I mean, it's faint, but when you turn the feather, you can see it. So that's just accenting the feather without doing a whole lot to it. Just an accent on it. And it's very light, 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 light touch. I cannot tell you that more than I am. Just three 
three hairs and some air. If Bob Ross was here, he'd be saying that. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to clean my brush. Boy, that's pretty because when it turns to the edge, you can see that flash of blue. Oh, my, it's gorgeous. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do here is I am going to add some little tiny blue dots down the outside edge of this feather. So I'm going to go out here on this edge with the blue. I'm going to continue with the blue. And it's just a little dot of paint. And I'm going to start down here on the tip right there. One little dot, another little dot, and I'm just coming up the edge. It's better if you can lay it down, but I'm sure you are having a hard time seeing it. I'll show you a clip, uh, in just a second. I'll just a tiny little bit of paint doesn't take much, and all it is is practice, practice, practice. People, as with anything, you just gotta. Be patient with yourself and enjoy the process. Don't get all bent out of shape if it doesn't look like what you want. All right. Nothing happens overnight. It's worth having. A little extra on there. I'll do that. Come back over here. Dot. Dot. Uh, uh, boy, this crow would be, he'd be tickled to death to get his feather back. I like to listen to them when they're having conversations out in the yard. They're really talking to each other and they walk around and talk and it's just so much fun to listen to them. Clicks and <laughs> clicks and calls and things like that. They're just so funny. I love nature. I love the creation. What the creator did just brings me so much joy. All right, I'm going up to the end. I'm almost done here. All right. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to come over here, see if you can see it. Wipe my paint off. Let me turn it this way. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I've done blue dots all the way down the edge right here, all the way, blue dots. And then on this side, it's just a blue flash of color right on the edge right here. Blue flash of color. And then I'm going to do some white in the middle. Okay, so let's go here. All right, I am going to use the small dot again. Let me make sure that my paint's not, there we go, it's all stirred up. All right, here we go. I got the little small pen, little small pen. White can be seen a pretty good ways away, so it doesn't take a lot. I'm going down the shaft of the feather. If you're wondering where what I, the line I'm going down is the shaft that goes right down the middle. You know what it reminds me of? You know those uh, whales that have all the spots on them? Oh, that are so beautiful and they're so gentle. This is what it reminds me of. Okay, now as you're going down, you can actually make that dot tinier and tinier and tinier as you're going. And there it is. All right. And can you see that, what we did there? 
We took the, we followed the shaft all the way down, and as we got to the tip, the little dot's almost gone, right there, almost gone. Okay, lovely, lovely. Let me wipe off my pen, and let's see here. Okay, I'm going to put him aside so he can dry. We'll do one more little thing here, and uh, I'll let you guys go and practice yourselves. But this little brush that's kind of got the wide, round, wide, skinny edge. Okay, I think I'm going to do the black on this one. Get a little bit there. My black was kind of thick, so I had to put some water in it to thin it up just a little bit. All right. So I'm going to do a dot, 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 dot. And there it is. And you can see what kind of uh, pattern that it makes. All right. Kind of makes a little round but flat pattern. You can see that, and hopefully the light's not shining through it. All right, I'm going to wipe my brush out on that one so the paint doesn't dry in it. And, okay, I'm going to do the little tiny, tiny, tiny pin again. And I'm going to do a touch of red on the tip down here. And this is all subjective, people. You can do whatever you want, color you want, how you want. This is just my my random thoughts here doing this okay and i just added a little tip of red to it just enough to off offset the black not a lot just enough to offset the black okay yay all right I'll be right back. Hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. I hope it inspires you to do something fantastic. It made me realize I need to practice more. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Practice is a good thing. But I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed showing you. Let me know what you create. I would love to know what you guys are creating out there. So. Have a good rest of your week, and I'll see you back with the next project. Bye.